every time I close my eyes I see in front of me Let's embark on a journey of knowledge and discovery Let's learn from the extraordinary lives of the greatest in the art of living The art of living Join the conversation with hosts Dr. Wael Harasi and Dr. Lamia Al-Hajj Every day From Sunday to Thursday From 2.40 to 3.40 p.m. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful Dear listeners, I salute you with salutation of peace Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh And welcome to the art of living with me Wael Al-Harasi And Lamia Al-Hajj Today's topic is about change and it is being said that life does not change by chance yeah or life does not get better by chance it gets better by change however it is this change that a lot of people fear and cannot really um, uh, take the adventure and make that decision or take the first leap towards change Change is important. A stagnant life is a life um, with no uh, future. Yeah, nobody would like to have uh, a stagnant, uh, a stagnant life. If you are told today that Lamia, uh, this is where you are, you're gonna be there until the end uh, of your term at SQU. Would you like it? No, not at all. I have lots of plans. You've got a, okay, <laughs> lots of plans. Good. So to change, you need to have plans. You need to have plans. Do you fear change? Um, I think there is some aspect or some element of, of, of fear, but it's not that it's a healthy fear. It's not the kind of fear that stops you from doing something. It's just the, it's the fear that makes you think twice and plan better. Uh, because if you want to, you know, if you want to change something, then you have to, first of all, be aware of what the things that, you know, are missing in your life. And then from there, you start making a plan and, and go forward. So with any unknown, I think there's some element of, of fear. But it shouldn't be the stopping. It, can, it should be the driving force. They say you change your life by changing your heart. Do you agree with that? You change your life by changing your heart. Well, I would Meaning s- changing starts from within. Yeah. yeah. Do you agree with that? Well, in the Quran, uh, there's a verse that says, yeah. so, so, so even Allah who has the power to change whatever he wants, anytime he wants, yeah. but he will not change unless the change comes from within a person. Okay, for this so topic I, today, yeah. Yeah, Lamia, we have um, a special guest. We have Ahmed bin Khalfan Al-Isri, who graduated from the Higher College of Technology as a quantity surveyor and worked in the oil and gas industry for a year but then moved to something very close to his heart, which is personal development and um, human resource development, where he works currently at Prosper. Ahmed, assalamu alaikum and welcome to the show. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. It is my pleasure and my honor to be with you. So The honor is ours, uh, Ahmed. And, uh, you know, uh, the topic we have chosen to do today is one that is um, probably difficult to many people. Yeah. yeah? Uh, change people would like to have some change but they wouldn't want to start it um, why do you think that's the case uh, at the beginning I would love to to take you uh, a further step and uh, I would like to say that uh, if, if we think and uh, we, if we discover about why does it happen uh, I would rather to, to, to ask the the audience a few questions at the beginning Mm-hmm. Uh, first of all, try to observe your life and uh, ask yourself a question. What do I learn from my past, from these experiences? And the second question is that, what does this uh, situation can affect on me? What do I learn from this experience? Yeah. And the most important question, it will be, uh, who is responsible for that? Who is responsible for the change or who is responsible for what has happened? Who is responsible for what has happened okay. in your life? Yeah. So are you satisfied or not? And who is responsible? So the answer is obviously it will be you. And uh, from there we can take the lead. Yes, I'm the, one who, I'm the one who can make changes in my life. If I made it like that, I can make it better. So if... if uh, we say we take it for granted as as okay i am responsible but a lot of people don't think that way people think i would rather blame somebody else or something else 
rather than say, I am responsible for any uh, misfortune that has happened to me. Uh, and, and, and this is this is the case, I think, with a lot of people in diagnosing the problem. So what you have said now is, is uh, a method of diagnosing the problem, reassessing your position. That is the key yeah. step uh, towards change or if you want to change. Yes. And change not necessarily means progression. Yeah. So we are talking change that is equal to progressions, change, a positive change, yeah. not a negative change, because this is an equation that mathematicians don't like. Yeah. Uh, progress equals change, but change not necessarily equals progress. progress yeah. yeah. However, today we would like to focus on the positive change. Yeah. Why is it that people would rather, you know, point the finger, Lamia? Well, I think it's, it comes from the... the I mean, first I'll start with a saying that's been, you know, goes around for every topic that includes change, change from within, change from the society. It says the first step towards change is awareness. Mm -hmm. The second step is acceptance. So first of all, in order to make change, we need to be aware that there's something that needs to be changed. Yeah. Once that's achieved, and, and that causes some fear because, um, I mean, even uh, Mahatma Gandhi said, those with the greatest awareness have the greatest nightmares. Because then you come to realize, you'll become more aware of your surrounding, and then you, you realize that there's some things that need to be changed. And yeah. that causes some sort of fear, coming back to the topic of, of fear. So step one is that we need to be aware of the, that there's an issue that needs, or something that needs to be you know, modified. And then we have to, the second step is acceptance. And when we say acceptance, it doesn't mean that we need to accept the, the way we are. I mean, one thing that we, when we say acceptance is that, okay, I have this fault or this, or this thing that I want to change. And I'm, I'm aware of it, but I'm, I accept it. But the, the acceptance we're talking about is that we accept that we are part of this problem and not point, don't blame others. Because that's a good thing. If, if we are to blame others, it means you don't have control of the issue. It's in the control of the people that you're pointing fingers at. And you just wait for them and to do something about it. And you wait for them to change, exactly. Mm -hmm. But when, you, when we accept that we need to change because we are to blame, then it is easier for us to take control. Now, there are a lot of types of changes uh, here. Yeah, just before we go deeper in, into the topic, yes. there is a lot of changes associated with our lives. Yeah, it could be a lifestyle change. It could be a habit change. It could be a change in ideology or thoughts. And these are the most ty uh, difficult types of change someone could ever make is change their ideas from ideas that has been associated with them from a, from a, a very early age or very early stage um, into realizing that probably those ideas might not be suitable or they need, you know, to they, they are exposed to new ideologies and, and new, new things, yet people do not change. Yeah. yeah? Um, some psychologists say that changing ideas and beliefs uh, becomes very important when people think that uh, what they believe does not match their actions. Mm -hmm. So they reach a stage where there is an imbalance in their life and there is some contradictions in their lives. Mm -hmm. So they either change their actions or change their beliefs. Mm -hmm. So you see that a lot of people might think of, okay, I will change the actions rather than change the beliefs. Changing beliefs um, normally is there are a lot of emotions attached to it yeah. although it might be the right decision to to take to change your beliefs mm -hmm. but people tend to go for the actions and and then they have short-lived uh, advantages and they will fall into the same circle again so going back uh, to you Ahmed uh, realizing that there is a problem Admitting that you are the sole uh, responsible, you have sole responsibility to, to what has happened and, of course, to the change itself. Yeah. Uh, I believe that the next step after that you admit uh, you are the core, you are the most uh, powerful uh, equipment or machine that can generate an, uh, a positive energy, a positive uh, attitude. Mm -hmm. You can ask yourself, uh, uh, I mean, uh, when, I, when I go back to, to, to finalize, why do people, they don't want to change? Yeah. What is the main reason? I found out that there are three main reasons. Uh, most of the time, people still waiting 
for the situation to be a perfect. Mm. But guess mm. what? It never gets perfect. It's continue to be worse and worse. Mm. Uh, a second reason why people uh, reject and they don't want to change uh, because they are waiting for people to agree or to accept their idea. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, every time there is a good and bad, uh, there is a negative and positive, good people, bad people, there is a heaven and hell. And uh, whether you like it or not, not yeah. everybody will accept your idea. Yeah. And the third reason, uh, because some sometimes and people, they're still uh, waiting for their skills to get better. Mm. But that won't happen until you get, uh, until you practice it. Yeah. And from yeah. there you will be a better person. So, so uh, waiting, waiting for the opportunity to come rather than actually going to the opportunity. Um, I would like uh, to remind our listeners that you could call us on 2460-2058. That's 2460-2058. You're listening to The Art of Living and today's topic is about change. How do we, need, how do we take the first leap towards change? How do we overcome fear uh, for change? And what are the main drivers? What are the practical ways of, um, of making that change happen in our lives? A lot of us um, are not happy uh, with, with probably the situation we are in or the position we are in. Uh, however, we can't change for some reason or another. And sometimes we can, but we don't want to. So all of these uh, questions we will attempt to answer during this show Shana. with uh, Ahmed and Lamia. Inshallah. There is a saying that I like, if, if you don't like where you are, change it. You're not a tree. <laughs> yeah. And you, know? you remind me of something. Uh, I, I do remember once uh, my father, he told me, if you look at, at the mirror and you don't like what you saw, don't blame the mirror. <laughs> True. Yeah. Don't blame the mirror. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, blame yourself. Blame yourself. Yeah. yeah they are. And there's nothing wrong. I mean, people might think that there's something wrong with blaming yourself, but that's the only way you can actually... Uh, excel because everybody needs some kind of improvement i mean nobody's perfect there's always room for improvement that's the only room that's the only room that's never full you know you can always there's always room for more improvement yeah so some people say i don't want to change because i don't need to change but that means that's somebody who's claiming perfection yeah because i mean trying to change doesn't mean that something has to be wrong you can be something it can be something good you just want it to be better and better it is said that wise men change their minds only fools would never do that. <laughs> yeah. Only fools would never change their minds. Yeah. However, wise men will always, well, wise women as well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> will always change their mind. Yeah. Because you follow, we have a caller. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. We've lost the caller. It's been a while, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. You can call us again. The number is 246020058. That's 2460 We have a caller. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Lamia and Dr. Vail, I'm Shaheen with you. Hello, Shaheen. How are you doing? Fine. Thank you so much. And thank you for having a very good topic today as well, like always. Thank you. Uh, I would like to caution the Muslim listeners and people of other faiths about this word change. Mm -hmm. More often than not, we hear people saying that in today's times and world or situation, it is difficult to apply the principles of Islam and uh, to be good mu practicing Muslims because of the changing time, situation and environment. Mm -hmm. However, I would like to caution and give a gentle reminder to many Muslims out there by giving you a very simple example. If one would go to a tailor to get his dress stitched, I'm sure the tailor is going to take the measurement of your body to make a dress for you and not the other way around. I mean, a tailor is going to make a dress for the kind of body or a shape that you have. So he is going. we are not going to change ourselves to fit into that dress. But we have the tailor has to see if the dress will fit us. So it is not whether we can change the principles of Islam to fit into today's times. But it is how well can we fit ourselves into the principles of Islam. Thank you very much for that lovely thought. Thank you very much. All right. Welcome. Thank you. It's although, a nice twist. It's, it's a nice twist. Although I know someone who, um, you know, uh, lost weight. 
<laughs> to fit into his new clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a true story. I know yeah. someone who you know, uh, you know, got rid of all his old clothes and uh, made narrower <laughs> clothes to fit his future him. Uh, you can see him in front of you. <laughs> 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 but it's, it's it's a very valid point. Um, yeah. You don't change. Yeah, uh, you wouldn't change Islam to fit uh, the world today, because Islam is adaptive. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Secondly, we need to change because it is, there is nothing wrong with Islam. Has nothing has ever Perfect, been yeah. uh, wrong with Islam as a religion. It has been always us who try and implement Islam, and we don't know how to implement it. Yeah. Yeah. There you are. Maybe maybe we can ask Ahmed. What do you think this uh, steps or the st active steps for to start the self change? Okay. Uh, to conclude, uh, what I've said what I've said before. Mm -hmm. um, when when is the perfect time to change? And the answer is now. The best time to change is now. And to change, you can start it from uh, starting as a thoughts. You can start it from there. You have to believe in your dream. What are you dreaming of? Mm. Uh, most of the time, people, they don't know what they want. Yes. And because of that, they fail on the lack of... Uh, they don't know. They feel as if they, they got lost. They don't know what to do. Mm. They don't have a sense of direction. They, they are. Yeah. So I believe this is the first step. Mm. And from there, you can continue by uh, visualizing your dream. You can sit within yourself five to ten minutes a day and visualize how... Are you going to become when you are that person and feel it and leave it and from there you can put an action list and we'll talk about it inshallah later on so inshallah. step one is to know what you want to change want into to, yeah. yeah and visualize your dream and visualize your dream and from there you can put your action list action and goals and uh, continue with that given that you admit that there is a problem and given that you admit that you are responsible and you take charge uh, of your life and then visualize. visualize have a vision where do you want to be visualize how are you going to get there um, some people might find that difficult not everyone is uh, great in the in the art of you know imagination yeah. that uh, how can someone uh, enhance their sense of imagination uh, do you do you recommend any particular way uh, just let your mind just run away free don't 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 uh, don't force it to stay on one place or don't force it to think about one thought. Just okay. leave it, and uh, you'll see it is uh, as a best gift that you are going to get. It's for free. You can try it. Yes, imagination. Sure. No limitations. Absolutely. So nothing is not realistic. Yeah. Don't, don't don't limit yourself because you think this particular thought is not realistic. That is a little bit difficult. Thoughts are free so just yeah. roam free in, in the world of imagination and you will find something that you think you know th I think that is impossible but it is worth pursuing can I say something here I mean I personally don't think oh well can I please say something you, you're not you're shaking your head <laughs> I really want to say something <laughs> okay so I mean I, I personally I personally would say that um, my personal experience I wouldn't say that I have a problem with imagination or what I want you know in the future but what what would you advise, you know, somebody who, for example, is optimistic and has, you know, know what kind of change wants to happen and know where he or she wants to be, but is influenced by the surrounding people who come and say, what, you want to be that you live in a country that doesn't support that you're out of your mind, go somewhere else and do that. You know, that for me is a big barrier. That's that's true. That's very true. I was I was in a meeting just before we came here and uh, we were discussing the energy in new graduates who go yeah. into the workforce and you know and work extra hours and do extra stuff without asking for 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 an extra pay yeah. and then a year a year and a half down the line people will start asking them are, are you getting anything for for the extra work extra hours you do and they pull them down a year and a half down the line they come late yeah they they go early and half the, of the work is not done Mm -hmm. yeah. So the surroundings, how do you get over the surroundings when you try and change? Uh, if we go uh, earlier, uh, earlier by uh, when, when, the, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Mecca, uh, he became the messenger 
and he, he, he the, the the message brought with him with a new idea. So how does يعني, how does the, that didn't affect him in uh, the way of uh, delivering his message? Although they 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 were, uh, they were offer him to give him money to give him positions yes. to whatever he wants, but he was consistent. Mm-hmm. والله يا عم لو وضع الشمس في يميني والقمر في يساري على أن أترك هذا الأمر ما تركته. So he had a direction, he had one vision, he was consistent to 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 to, to achieve that that point. So mm-hmm. I believe if we take if we take that story and uh, we implement it's it, role model, yeah. it's a role model. So who am I to that society? And now, I mean, that that happened when when you know when the revelation happened in Mecca, and then you know there was only few people. And who knew now that the Islam will reach to China and the West and Americas and, and all over the world, even to the most remote uh, parts of the world? So mm-hmm. that idea that was in the eyes of those people at the time, what was impossible, is is, is happening. It's possible, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's it's because of that uh, persistence uh, of of uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he didn't bow to the pressures. So the message here is that be above the pressures, do not bow to them. When you have a clear vision and when when you really believe in it and that it is the right way to go, then I think everything else uh, becomes becomes easy. Now, past that pressure, you want to change. What would be the next step after sitting and visualizing and, and, and dreaming? We have a call. After the call, we'll come back to you, inshallah, Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, Dr. Wail. How are you? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. This is Abdul Hamid Al Kitani. Ahna wa Dr. Abdul Hamid. How are you? I'm I'm doing fine. I'm doing well. I have to say, first of all, um, this program is becoming one of my favorites. Oh, thank Honestly. you very much. Thank you. Uh, and you are now becoming so, our favorite fan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot of credit to you and uh, Dr. Lamia. It's been an excellent. Uh, thank you very much. Thank the, you. Um, holy month of Ramadan. Amen. And it's good to have Ahmed uh, with you guys, uh, the son of someone who believed of uh, positive change. Alhamdulillah. And um, with that, I would like to uh, get an opinion of Ahmed and, and everyone uh, in the studio, really, um, with, re- with regards to visualization. Now, um, what happens to me personally is that I can visualize where I want to go. Um, but it doesn't have to be uh, a session in a quiet room or, you know, with a closed eyes and, and so on. I can visualize things as I drive, as I sit with people and uh, as I walk, actually. But does it really have to be um, a proper session in which in which you, you have to really do visualization uh, per se? Or is it something that can be practiced as you move on with your life? That, that's that's the question I would love I would love to hear the answer for. Thank sure. you very much. The very valid question. Uh, thank you very much for that. Yeah. Thank you once again. Thank you. Jazakallah khair. Uh, to answer that question, uh, I believe at the beginning, uh, to practice it more, you have to do it in in a quiet place, in a peaceful room, so you can gather your mind. You can continue with that. You can start by thinking, and uh, put the right image of who you want to be. And from that, by practicing, at the beginning you may face a bit problem. You might do it for 20 minutes. And by practicing, it may reduce to 15, up to 10, up to 5 minutes. And from there, you will start to see it in your life. In, although while, while you're driving, while you're talking, maybe something, it will attach you. It will remind me of that uh, that visualization. So I believe it, it, it become it will come after practice. You have to practice it, then you can uh, master it. Master it, yes, they are. Um, I totally agree with you. Uh, you could you could master this. You could practice it uh, by have by having spending a lot of time first of all, and then you could reduce that, and then you can do this daydreaming anywhere you are. Yeah, and uh, while while you're driving, although I do that, I would not encourage. A lot of daydreaming while you're driving. I think we need to keep focus on, on, on the road for our own safety. Otherwise, we'll never reach the way, where we want to be, yeah, physically and mentally. Uh, but what I would like to say is that this will depend on the, um, on the problem itself. Some, some issues, they need sheer concentration. 
and they need dedicated time. And you need to take sometimes time out of your uh, normal areas where, where, where you are to focus and concentrate. You might have uh, problems that need to be solved. Um, and the only way is to get completely out of your environment into a completely new environment to think clearly. I remember Sheikh Al-Fan, Rahimahullah, he used to love being in the beach in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember when I, I had a topic t that I wanted to speak to him, I said, okay, come to my house, we'll go to be together to the beach or let's meet in the beach and we'll have a stroll together. So changing the environment to, to, to clear have mind. yeah clear your mind, choose a place that you find comfortable. Maybe you don't like the beach. You, you like somewhere where it is noisy. If that will help you, then do it. Go for it. There, there isn't a single equation that will work for all. Yeah. And the imagination should involve something like you should imagine where you want to be. And until you actually feel, you, you actually get that feeling. For example, if somebody is, let's say person X is, you know, has stage fright. Okay, and he wants to be a pre he wants to be a public speaker. Okay, then he would imagine every day for ten to fifteen minutes that he is actually on a stage with thousands of audience, and he's talking until he actually starts getting the feeling, and practicing that will make it very easy. I recall a story by I can't I can't I'm not very good with the names of basketball players, but he's a f famous basketball player, and he was in prison for seven years, and he actually never touched a ba uh, basketball before, and in, when he was in pr uh, prison for seven years, he used to imagine every day for ten minutes that he's scoring, that he's playing basketball and scoring. And as soon as he left um, jail and he went straight, you know, to, to play, he was one of the best players, although he never actually touched the ball. But the imagination made him f live that dream. So you can see the power of the subconscious mind. That is true. However, I think some people might just switch off the radio, say, you know, because I, I've been there and say, ah, oh, rubbish. How can you get better in something by just imagining? Oh, but if you read the books that talk there about is, the brain, there is there is power. there is evidence that yeah. uh, you know uh, if if you think and focus on something, you will have generate the passion for it, and it is that passion will help you when when you start practicing. Yeah, I believe it is not only the imagination, uh, but he must have had time where he practiced physically. Yeah, yeah. In prison. In, yeah, yes, of course. In prison, they do have basketball. Yeah. Yeah, I've never been to prison. Just to put, <laughs> I've never been pro. to prison before. Yeah, so I'm not talking from experience, but I've seen it. Yeah, and uh, by the way, uh, practicing visualization is not a new knowledge. Mm -hmm. It is there in the Quran. If you read the verses of uh, Al Jannah, yes, try to remember the first time you read you read that that verses, and uh, you will be so attached to these verses. In Al Muttaqina fi Jannat al Nahar. Uh, the verse that talks and describes mm. how Jannah or heaven look like. Mm. And the first time, you'll take a bit longer time to think about it, to try to imagine it, to imagine mm. it. And from there, by, by reading it, by, by feeling so attached, attached to it, mm. uh, you will continue to fall in love with it. Yes. And if you fall in love with that, you will directly try to do whatever you want to be in that place. So, again... You don't have to believe, and but you have to practice as well. As well, yeah. So believing and practicing. So I think that bas basketball player used to practice as well, yeah. yeah? Because if I, if I imagine that I will be um, a good lecturer without studying, oh no, of course not. I mean, it, but it, the the point is that it takes that imagination plays a very big role True. in achieving that. Yes. Dream. And yes. it, because eventually it starts to materializing in your life, you get the feelings as you imagine. Of course, it depends how 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 good you become at this imagination yeah. uh, task. Because with time, you start actually getting the feeling and that you're building the confidence even before you start it. But that also helps the process. It's not enough to achieve the change, but it, it would probably accelerate the process. I, I totally agree with you. And several days ago, we talked about the story of the Prophet Muhammad uh, during the battle uh, of Al-Khandaq, uh, Al-Ahzab. Yeah. Yeah. When, he w when they came across, the, the companions came across a, a large stone that they couldn't uh, crash. And the, and the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, came and he, while he was crashing it, he said, um, I see the future that the armies of Rome tremble. Yeah, I see the future 
that the doors of Persia will open up for all of you, for Muslims. Absolutely. And at that time, they, were, they, they, they lived a very bleak time. Yeah. Uh, however, that imagination, he, he was triggering imagination. Think of this. This is where we want to be. Imagine it and yeah. we'll work towards it. Uh, we are expecting Lamia um, a, a phone call. Yes. We from have, a very special guest. We have a special guest, but we're just waiting. I hope the time difference doesn't get a confusion, but uh, she should be online soon, inshallah. Hopefully, hopefully. Um, Ahmed, did you want to take us through, maybe do you think it's the best time to talk about the action lists or you want to talk about something else before we get into the, you know, get into action? Okay, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, to get into that action, so what are the actions that you want to take to, 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 to achieve your dreams? to make it happen mm. uh, first of all you have to sit in quiet place take that image from he- from your head and put it in a piece of paper mm. you have to see it you have to see it in front of you not just not, not, not just imagine it but write it, down. write it down after you describe that personality that attitude that ahmed mathalan mm. for example ahmed the future ahmed yeah. the future dr wild the future dr lamia Once you see that person, now try to see, try, try to compare who is Ahmed now and who is Ahmed then. How, yeah. how can I fit to that person? And what's missing? And what's missing? What do I need to change? Ask yourself a question. Three things. What is good and bad? What is good? What is bad? And what is ugly? What is good in me so I can continue with that? Mm-hmm. So I can save it? what is bad so I can replace it and what is ugly so I have to get rid of it and from there you are going to ask yourself another question uh, what are the attitudes that I have to bring within mm. to fit into that personality and uh, from that attitudes you might face a bit of problem because of uh, It's a new environment, yeah. a new journey, a new journey mm-hmm. but you have to be a bit patient. And from there, you, the process will continue to, 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 to describe about your goals and how to, to, to translate these uh, descriptions into action lists. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, part of this uh, session is not only uh, look, looking at uh, the points where you, you, you lack Um, you know, confidence or maybe uh, where you need to change. But I think you need to examine um, the consequences. Examine consequences at that stage. Think, if I have fear of change, if I continue this way, what would be the consequences? Mm -hmm. If I make the change, what would be the consequences? For example, if someone is, cannot be punctual at all, and wants to make uh, a change in his lifestyle to be punctual. That change will mean that there will be a lot of shift in lifestyle, considering things that had never been considered before. And um, some people might have fear of that because it's a burden. I will have to wake up early. I have to prepare myself from from the night before and all of that. Mm -hmm. However, if you just do the change, Start the change. What would be the consequence? What is the worst case scenario? Nothing really. The And consequence we, we, is that you'll, you'll be respected more. Yeah. yeah. So where you're going to end up is much better where you have been. So you weigh the two consequences against each other. Yeah. And I want to ask Ahmed. Ahmed, I mean, do you, do you advise or in your, in your uh, views, do you think the change should be, like if you have something, a really big aim, Do you think that, that should be broken down to stages or yeah. you can just go full speed? No, of course you have to, to break it down. Uh, the journey of thousand miles starts with one step. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So break it with down. Hope. <laughs> <laughs> so break it down into small, small, uh, small goals. Yeah. Small, uh, what's that? Uh, small things that you, you, you can get it on. Yeah, step, step break, by step. Break down your goals into little bites. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe reward yourself after every phase so that you have some self-confidence. Yeah. Like, for example, if you wanted to be a, you know, a public speaker and you actually have stage fright, if we do your first public appearance in front of five people, reward yourself. That's, that's a good step. And the next time it'll be 100. The next it'll be 1,000. And I guess you don't go too harsh on yourself. You go, okay, I want to do this. And your first attempt will be in front of 1,000 people and you fail and you feel like 
that's it. Mm. I know I feel I didn't I didn't do this properly. Maybe they were too ambitious. They ran towards the final goal too fast, um, and maybe that's a bit being a bit too harsh on yourself. There are two 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 things here that come to my mind at the stage. One is when you say um, uh, prepare yourself. Yeah, um, you need to prepare other people as well. Mm-hmm. When you go too fast and you don't prepare your environment, people will think, really? What happened? And you'll just invite comments, unwanted comments, sometimes mockery. Yeah. So prepare the environment. Especially if you actually, go especially slow. if the change affects the environment. Go slow. Yeah. Just imagine if someone is late at work every single day, rather than arriving at seven, they arrive at nine every single day. And just suddenly for a whole week, you arrive at seven or six thirty. It's a good thing. However, you need to, you know, make people aware of the changes before you make them. So you prepare the environment for your own change. Yeah. yeah? Waiting for the call? Not yet. No, no call yet. Okay. Okay. Uh, one, one other thing is that be realistic. When you, you need to be realistic when you, when you make your uh, well, goals. Yeah. Um, however, being realistic means, doesn't mean that you have to create boundaries. Do not understand this in a wrong way. How can we balance, Ahmed, between being realistic and not putting any obstacles on the way of, of change? Yeah. Uh, actually, that is a very good question. Uh, at the beginning, try to differentiate between uh, a fear and realistic, being realistic. Mm-hmm. Fear is something and being re- realistic is something else. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, successful. most of successful people, they said, if you have a goal, uh, multiply it by four. So that's how you can be so realistic. Multiply it by four. Multiply by four. What do you mean by that? Yeah, if you want to achieve 1,000 reals per uh-huh. month, you can multiply it by four. So double it. I, double have, it. I have another, uh, you know, example. Okay. But it's a little bit violent. Uh-huh. Yeah. When we used to learn karate, they uh-huh. say when, 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 when the, you know, when the, when the target, which is your opponent's face, for example, is just half a meter away. Imagine that it's one meter and a half away. Yeah. Uh-huh. So the punch becomes much stronger. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you could, you could punch your bad habits the same way uh-huh. yeah and achieve your goals much better but but don't try this at home <laughs> no, don't try it at home <laughs> you can try it at home but not with people yeah with your bad habits inshallah one part ahmed is enjoy the journey yeah. the journey towards change is, is 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 plays a big part it takes a long time a long a long part of your own time try and enjoy it when we gave the example of, of being punctual yeah um, it involves sometimes, you know, arranging our clothes beforehand. What we do in Eid, for example. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We don't do it all, all, all year round, but we do it during Eid. That all the clothes are, are hang, are ironed, are, you know, with, with all type of uh, fragrances. And on the second morning, we are ready very quick. Yeah. Imagine if we do that and, and, once you look at it, just before you go to bed and you look that everything is tidy and in place, you enjoy it, you love it. You love yeah. the process of doing that. You wake up, you don't have to go through the process of preparing stuff. It's all prepared. Yeah, you enjoy it. So try and enjoy every single step as much as you can. If it is not enjoyable, make it enjoyable. Yeah. And by making that, uh, you can appreciate. First of all, you have to appreciate the journey. Mm-hmm. And by appreciating... I can say uh, there are three three words I would love to say it a lot, and I used to to present it as a presentation in in my my high college of technology. Mm-hmm. When I used to do it, so first of all, I would love to say that uh, first of all, I am. You are who you are. Mm. Ask yourself that question. Once you know the core of who you are. Then I ask yourself, I have, what do you have? What kind of attitudes, habits, skills, mm-hmm. skills, who you are? And then I will. This is the future. So I am, it's a small environment. I have, 
it's getting bigger and I will is the future so mm. you can travel through that so by linking yourself through these levels I believe you will enjoy your journey and you'll start appreciating every single step from that journey there is a huge lesson in that Lamia um, when you ask normally when you ask these questions who am I what do I have it's to get to the answer that you are blessed yeah. and you have a lot yeah which some people might think okay then I should be satisfied and, and stay where I am <laughs> so the lesson here is that even if you are good at something yes don't stay where you are aim for better and always ask that question where do I want to be yeah never be satisfied with what you have try and have more in a very positive way if, yeah. if, if you are good with people try and be better if you're earning money try and earn more the more you have the more you're able to give and help others yeah. yeah and this applies to every level I mean each level of life so you can you can assess yourself and what can you give back to yourself how can you develop yourself and how what more can you give to the society yeah. so try to be try to get out of that self-centered uh, position where you think okay I like who I am you know I know who I am I like what I have and I'm happy yeah but what did you do with those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you You know, how are you, gonna, how are you going to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by using or utilizing whatever he gave you to serve the community? And I always like to look at the bigger uh, picture of things. You know, I want to look at the society and always think, what can I give back to the society? So even if you don't want to change something from yourself, try to change something in your surrounding, whether it be the family or it be the whole community. That's true. That, that, that's, that's totally true. And it will follow the same principles because the people you're trying to change will face the same questions that you faced. Yeah. And you, you, can, you are able to answer them the way you answer the same questions to yourself. Yeah? Uh, dear listeners, you're listening to The Art of Living. And today's show is on making the first change, first step towards change. Uh, you can call us on 246020058. That's 246020058. I think we have a call. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Hello, you, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Who is speaking? Uh, this is Rahma. Hello, Rahma. How are you? Is it the same Rahma who called us a few days ago? Books. <laughs> uh, yeah. Rahma al Khlaifin. Yeah, yeah. Welcome. Welcome back to the show. Uh, okay. I like uh, the topic of the show today. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just want to uh, give you one comment. Mm-hmm. Uh, sure. I strongly believe that uh, uh, change comes w- from within and uh, no one can prevent that to happen. Uh, but sometimes other, others uh, or surroundings can act as a barrier prevent that from happening. Uh, I will give you a very simple example. Uh, in our society, in Omani society, unfortunately, we don't have uh, the respect for individualism. Uh, Sorry, we didn't get that. There is no... The voice is too low. There is no respect for the individualism. Uh, so there is, there, is no, there is no respect for indi- individualism. Now, yeah. uh, what, what do you mean by that, Rahma? I mean that we always have to, to follow the same opinion, the same point of view. We have to uh, act identical, the same as the other person did. Otherwise, we will be criticized, we will be blamed. Uh, yeah. it's, not, it's not only from... It's, sometimes it's from the... Among the family itself, that when one kid is, has different personality than the other, everyone will say, okay, you have been raised, uh, raised on the same house, same parents, but why you are different? Mm-hmm. We don't have this respect for being different. Uh, yes, I, uh, I, I, I agree with you. I agree with yeah. you. However, okay. for anyone who wants to, to be different, um, I think being being careful and being diplomatic and being mm-hmm. wise about it, it plays a, a big factor in how people accept us. Because there is a very fine line between being different and being rebellious. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. There is a, a very fine line. And sometimes people do not differentiate between the two, being rebellious or being just different. I, I totally agree with you. We, we live in a society where being different is not uh, widely accepted. If we, um, as, as the young generation uh, of Oman, would like to um, be different and, and impose positive change in, our, in life, we need, I think, to give um, the older generation and, the, and, the, and our sur- surroundings some credit um, uh, as well as try and show them that we are not trying to be rebellious. It's a positive change and always in the best way possible. Also try to involve them. When you involve your surrounding, it becomes easier for you to overcome that barrier. Yeah. And uh, I heard a very good uh, example yeah. about uh, change. And uh, don't try to force anyone to change. Mm. For example, if you, br- if you bring a b- an egg yeah. and uh, we force that egg to 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 um, to break to break so you will kill that egg yeah but uh, on the opposite side uh, if you let it break it from within inside you will have a life with that that, that that's a very good example so uh, rahma do you agree with th- with that oh we thought she was uh, with 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 us uh, on air but anyway um it's it's a very fair point uh, that you raised that we are not accepted sometimes for for the, for the new ideas that we have, um, but I always try and engage and involve um, uh, the surroundings for for them to accept us in in a, in a better way. We need to encourage them to in- accept us rather than rebel. Actually, this comes this I think this is a perfect time to bring the topic of trying to moving from changing. Uh, you know, personal change or self self change to society change. Okay, changing the surrounding, uh, because as Rahma said, that sometimes it involves you know even if you want to change, it involves changing of your surrounding. So how can you change your surrounding? And this is not it's not an easy task. Yeah. Okay, because people are live a certain lifestyle, they're brought up with certain ideologies and thoughts, and they like that. That's that's their comfort zone. So yeah. when you suggest a change, you're bringing them out of their comfort zone, uh, and that takes some skills and patience and time. Yeah. Um, so I had a nice, uh, I, I looked at a nice uh, research uh, done by uh, Stanford University uh, on how many of us is enough actually to make change in the environment and to the society. And strangely enough, I didn't think it was that, uh, that low. Yeah. So the, su- the study suggested that only five people in 100 is all it takes. So this mm-hmm. st- Stanford University study tells us that just, uh, when just 5% of the society accepts a new idea, it becomes embedded. So it becomes embedded, and then when 20% adopt the idea, then yeah. it becomes unstoppable. We can talk a little bit more about that after we take this call. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And here's uh, Dr. Wael. Alhamdulillah, bkhairin, Sheikhna. And uh, Abu Anas, mashallah, you're there today. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, my pleasure. Sheikh Msalam, khaifi. Alhamdulillah, Msalam, yes. Thanks for calling. Thanks for tuning in and calling, Sheikh Salam. Uh, thank you for having uh, Abu Anas and for having these uh, nice topics, MashaAllah. We okay. learn a, a lot from you guys, so I really appreciate it. Um, thank you. I just want to uh, share my part, just that uh, um, we know that we are always told to enjoy the journey of change. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay? But some we need also to uh, realize that Change has pain in it also. Don't always think that you will enjoy the journey to the extent that you won't feel the pain of changing. So um, there is no gain without pain, as they say. And for people to really do the change, yes, you enjoy the journey, but also expect and prepare for the pain of change because with the change, it means that you're leaving back all your previous um, um, comfort zone, and you're going into new life mm-hmm. of changes. So that is only my my uh, advice: is that you need to feel the pain for you to go to the right change. You have to pay the Don't price. Don't expect only to enjoy it. Yeah, there you are. Right. Barakallahu feek. Yeah. Uh, shukran. Thank, thank you thank so you. much, Imsalam, for tuning shukran. in yeah. and for your contribution. Valid point, uh, Ahmed. Do you want to comment on that? Uh, yes, actually, mashallah, uh, he was so, 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 so wise. 
to, 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 to tell us about something like that. And even though uh, in the Holy Quran, as it said, حَتَّى إِذَا اسْتَيْأَسَ الرَّسُولُ وَظَنُّوا أَنَّهُمْ قَدْ كُدِّبُوا جَاءَهُمْ نَصْرُنَا So they went through the process where they, where they felt so disappointed. They, they were about to quit. But again, victory comes. Mm. And uh, they they paid the price of being so patient. And subhanallah, they where you got the result. And uh, the change will come, inshallah. So with perseverance, with passion, with energy... Uh, and conviction, uh, inshallah, the impossible becomes possible. Inshallah, inshallah. inshallah. What about what? What about if you think that you want to change uh, a certain aspect, and then you realize halfway through that that's not the change that you were looking for? Change your Why? mind. Yeah, that's a Ch- different kind of change. <laughs> yes, yes, change your mind and yeah. and change Start direction. Again. Yeah. Start again and change direction. Uh, as I said, we we continuously learn, mm-hmm. and sometimes we learn in the process, and we uh, we realize. The direction we are going is not the direction we want to be. Yeah. So don't let it uh, until it's too late. Change direction, uh, steer towards the right direction, and and uh, and achieve your goals. Um, dear listeners, we'll we'll stop for a minute now for the call of prayers, and we'll see you after the break. So the art of living today. We're talking about first steps towards change and our guest in the studio today is Ahmed bin Khalfan al Aisari, talking about the steps that we need to take for change we discussed about the steps that need to be t- uh, taken to change from within so self-change and self-development and we're just going to touch upon in a couple of minutes how can we change the surrounding or what are the effective steps in changing the surrounding um, I have this uh, four, four C's uh, as I saw it uh, when I read one of the uh, articles it says connect so we're talking about the society now we need to first connect communicate, cooperate, and then create the change. And uh, going back to the study uh, done by Stanford University, it says it shows only 5% of the society needs to accept an idea so that it becomes embedded. And that's much lower than I think most people uh, think is the case. Once that percentage reaches to 20, then the, uh, you know if the idea is adopted by 20%, then it basically is unstoppable. You're going to this exponential phase. Uh, only 20%. Only 20%. So 5% is enough for the idea to be embedded. For example, uh, we have a society that doesn't do, for example, recycling. And we want to embed the idea of recycling in the society. It's easier for, for a person to apply this change, you know, and, and be an environmental person who's going to recycle. But if you want that change to encompass the whole society, then you need to start preaching that idea. So step one is innovate, bring up the idea, and keep the idea alive. Normally it's frustrating because, first of all, you start alone. Yeah. And then you start trying to so speak to the people in the surrounding. Once you get that 5%, you're in the safe zone because now you have the idea embedded in the society. The more, of course, it needs a lot of perseverance, it needs a lot of patience, it needs a lot of communication because yeah. you need to communicate that idea to the surrounding. So in Oman, we need 200,000 people to buy <coughs> in any particular idea. So it it gets embedded, embedded uh, within yeah. society. And this can happen through conferences, through communications, through uh, conventions, through media appearances. I mean, we're trying to stop the habit of speeding while driving. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of campaigns happening now. And mm. of course, with the radars as well. So the actions and ideas and campaigns. So inshallah, with time, we, the more people we get convinced and on board, one day we will get there, inshallah. And you know what? Uh, on on the topic of, of, of speeding, have you noticed something about the last campaign that is currently ongoing? No. It is so different from the previous campaigns. The previous campaigns do not speed. Do not do this. Negative. Uh, Negative. Yeah. And the current campaign says, thank you for not speeding. Yeah. yeah? Yes. Thank you for not yeah. speeding. So it's the way we convey the message as well plays a major role. Absolutely. In Absolutely. the past, with all the campaigns, the number of accidents, yeah, uh, was still going up and up, yeah. but now with the current campaign, it I don't say that it plays the it's the only factor. No, but highlighting it plays, the right attitude is yeah. what we're supposed to do, not highlight the false yes, or the, the bad yes. action. It so, plays a, a it plays a role. So the way the message was conveyed played um, a part part uh, in reducing the number of accidents. Yep, absolutely, and and as more and more people you know adopt this idea, then the environment starts to change. So uh, yes, it's not as fast as changing from within. But with these steps, inshallah, uh, change can happen. So even if we want to change from within, we need to give ourselves uh, the right message. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, And I I like a a very good quote that um, change comes from focusing your energy, Mm -hmm. not fighting the past, but building the future. Yeah. Yeah. So rather than focusing your energy in fighting the past, being negative, build the future. Ahmed, 
final remarks and what are the take home messages from from you today yeah, to the listeners uh, at the beginning i have i, I have just uh, three points to conclude uh, this session today uh, first of all uh, if you want to change just go for it go for the first step and it will continue to the second step and third step and suddenly you see yourself you are running uh, number two, most of successful people, they didn't reach there, but uh, just because of they wanted. But it 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 happened with a lot of effort, a lot of energy, and they were so patient to to encourage themselves to be successful. Mm-hmm. And uh, the final point is that uh, enjoy your journey. <coughs> yeah. Enjoy it. And uh, I have a very s- simple sentence to conclude that. And uh, please, dear brothers and sisters, mm-hmm. do it for your country. Do it for your society. Do it for your family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do it for your father and mother and your brother and sister and your sons. Do it for your, for your home. And finally, and most important, change and do it for yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Ahmed. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Most You've been uh, a great guest today. Thank you. Uh, it, it's been a pleasure having you. And uh, the topic, <coughs> I know we haven't covered everything, but it's, it's, it's at least we give people some food for thought yeah, so they yeah. could read more and explore this uh, area more. Thank you for all those who have uh, joined in and called us. And thanks for all the listeners and all those who tried and to call us but could not get uh, through with us today so another day another show we'll see you tomorrow inshallah in the art of living from me Wa'il al-Harasi and Lamia al-Hajj Assalamu alaykum